What's up, kids? Justin Dower, Spectrum Real Estate Consultants, Keller Williams of Northern Rhode Island, back with another installment in the video series. You don't need no stinking realtor to sell your house. Um, now, we are still in segment one regarding pricing your home appropriately for today's market. And uh, now we are going to consider in episode four local market conditions um, or microeconomics, as it might be called, um, in considering how to price your home. So I guess we should start first at the, uh, the old reliable basics, supply and demand. Um, is there more housing supply than there are uh, buyers creating demand for, for those homes? Um, is it a seller's market, which means um, it is more competitive for buyers? Or is it a buyer's market, which is more competitive for sellers? Or is it somewhere in the middle of the balance? Um, and how do you price accordingly? So uh, let's take our local market as uh, uh, the example for today. Uh, so here in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, um, and uh, the surrounding area, uh, it's still a very slanted seller's market in most places. Uh, this means that there are a heck of a lot more buyers trying to get into these areas um, and to, to be homeowners here than there are homes for them to buy. Um, if we are to take an easy metric, uh, we like to look at um, the number of listings sold in a given month uh, historically. So uh, let's take maybe 2017 or 2018 that is as an example. Uh, you know, we'd have 5,000 listings on the market and, you know, somewhere in the, you know, four or 5,000 um, sold listings, uh, sold homes in that month. And, uh, you know, today in, in these sorts of markets, uh, we have something like 1,000 uh, you know, in some months we have 700, 800, you know, it's, it's far less by, by you know, a, a few factors um, than we are typically accustomed to. And as such, uh, the market is tilted towards the advantage of the sellers. Now, how does this affect how you would price your property? And it's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, we find that a lot of sellers, um, maybe if they're a little inexperienced or uh, don't have any realtor friends that they can lean on for some advice, um, they feel like the old paradigm, the typical paradigm of list high, you know, pick a, pick a higher number than you expect to get and let somebody chew you down because, you know, nobody wants to pay a sticker price for anything. Um, and that can be true in a balanced market and is certainly true in a buyer's market when there are more buyers than, than there are homes and the buyers have the power. But frankly, when it gets this tilted in the seller's favor, listing high is a very bad idea. Uh, we talked about in the last video how buyers are exhausted. Um, you know, qualified buyers are out there making um, eight, nine, 10 offers on, on as many homes and still losing the bid before they're able to win one. Uh, over asking price, no inspections, appraisal gap, all, all these different things, uh, and still not finding a home. If you price your house ten, five thousand dollars over what the market feels is appropriate for that listing, people just don't call, and you end up with a, a straight flop. Um, you have to reduce your price after a very short time. And folks, let me take a brief pause here and, and go on a tangent. Please understand that you are allowed to date your position. You are allowed to date your understanding of where your pricing, pricing should be. You are not allowed to marry it. Uh, the market must be allowed to be your educator. If you have new data, if your house has been on the market for three weeks or a month and you don't have any showings or, or very few or you know, not more than a few handful of inquiries even in a, in a week's time, you must adjust. Anyhow, tangent over, let me continue. <clears throat> so where you need to price your home and the uh, tactic that you need to employ is uh, right where the market feels that the value of your house is proven by comps, which everybody has access to, especially those buyers who uh, have hired real estate professionals, most do. Um, and you let the very competitive um, for buyers market bid the price up. So let's say we think the value of your home is uh, $450,000. Uh, we think that is going to be the final sales price. That's, that's our target. Um, we, are, we are coming to that sales price understanding that it's probably 10 or $20,000 higher than um, you know, a sale from six months ago for the same house because you know, the, the prices have continued to rise around here. Um, so instead of pricing the house 
uh, we want to get 450. Instead of pricing the house at 475 and letting somebody chew us down, we might list the house at 439. Uh, we might list under our target because we know that people will be excited. Um, people will come out in droves to you know those open houses, uh, to the private appointments, whatever the case may be. And we'll have a number of offers to leverage against one another to create those uh, those bidding wars. Uh, now, you know, these sometimes leave a bad taste in you know sellers' mouths. They don't they don't want to feel like they are being bad people by pitting buyers against one another. But this is the nature of of selling anything, folks. Whether it's a home or a, a handbag, um, you want the most people looking at it at the same time uh, to to boost the price up from. Uh, from where it lays and we all understand human buying psychology if you want something but somebody else also wants it um, you're willing to pay more to make sure that that you get that item that you want house or handbag um, so there's your your supply and demand in your in your local area now what things are going to affect that um, they are myriad and you kind of got to pay attention to all of them and make sure you're not getting uh, smacked in the face with some some pitfalls here Local politics, for better or for worse, uh, like it or love it, are, um, are a big deal, and you, you kind of got to pay attention. Um, you know, you'll, your real estate professionals, they're doing this for you. It's all we do day in and day out. Um, you know, studying money, studying local politics, macroeconomics, money flows, capex, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you now, as, um, as a seller, you know, need to be cued into this thing. Um, very regular occurrence, let's say, in any given township or city. Uh, you know, hey, uh, we're gonna we're gonna remove the excise tax. Great, you don't have any, you know, yearly uh, payment to the to the town or city for owning an automobile. Um, sounds great, but uh, you know, written into the same revision in the tax code is you know a doubling or or something of of you know traditional real estate property tax. You might want to get your house out on the market before that comes down the pipe. It's impossible in some cases to prognosticate, but if you are paying attention to um, the ins and the outs of local politics. You might see this coming down and, and you might get your sale done before that happens. Um, now, uh, other things that could affect, uh, you know, there are always different uh, additions to potential uh, demand in a, in a marketplace. Uh, it could be anything. Amazon's going to be putting in a new logistics center down the road and, you know, it's going to bring 3,000 jobs and everybody's freaking out about the fact that you're going to be able to order toothpaste uh, from Amazon and it'll, it'll arrive at your house 20 minutes after you. Uh, you order it. Trivial in some cases, but there, there are lifestyles that necessitate something like this. Um, you know, some older folks, they, they need this or that item. They can't get out to the store to get it. And, you know, being able to have that arrive at one's door in a, in a very short amount of time is a positive thing. Um, all stuff to, to look out for. Um, seasonality. Uh, you know, this, this is one of the big ones, guys. And, oh, uh, bro, it, it, it's interesting sometimes what people miss in so far as, uh, as, as seasonality and when is a good time and not a good time to list a home. Guys, don't put your house on the market in November and December. Just don't. Uh, it just smacks of desperation. Uh, the, the percentage of buyers that even have their eyes open during the holiday season is a fraction of what it would be otherwise. And if you are listing your house during that time, it tells the market expressly, I must sell my home now. I don't have a choice. Um, so while we would not necessarily have to disclose the reason for a seller wanting to sell their home, uh, now we have widely broadcasted it. Uh, not the exact reason, of course, but the fact that it needs to sell immediately. Um, now let's take uh, stock of your home. Let's go back to that, you know, uh, 2,500 square foot, three bedroom, three bath colonial on an acre of land and, you know, the swimming pool in the back and the swing set. This is pretty clearly a family home, right? There's going to be uh, a number of family members living in this place and uh, probably some of them of school age. Now, when should we list this house? Anybody want to venture a guess? Put it down in the comments. Um, probably in the spring or at the very latest summertime, we want those parents uh, to have some breathing room in buying a home so that they can get their kids into, maybe it's a very desirable housing, or uh, excuse me, school district, um, and they want to purchase their home, get settled in their home, and have, have a little bit of time to just exhale before the kids go back to school in, in September. Um, if you are selling this home in the fall, yeah, I mean, the fall season is sometimes arguably just as good as the spring, albeit shorter of a window. Um, but that particular home, especially in a very uh, hot and desirable school district, you probably want to get it out before the fall. There's just 
far fewer parents and, and far fewer families looking for a home of, of that type in, in that area once the, the, the school season has already started, unless they're being very proactive uh, for the next school, se uh, school season. So you can start to understand the, the dynamics of local market atmosphere, local, uh, local market characteristics, and how it should affect your pricing strategy. Um, now, if you like what you're hearing so far, like and subscribe down below. If you've uh, got something you think I missed and you want to ask a question, leave it in the comments section, and uh, I will get to it as soon as humanly possible. We'll see you in the next video.